and welcome to another video. In today's lesson we're going to learn how to make this really simple cow. It is great for beginners and there is no joining of any ends because it's worked in a spiral. I would like to say a huge thank you to redheart.com for supplying the yarn that we are going to use in this tutorial. There is also a free ribbon pattern. It's located on my website and I'll put a link for you in the description box. So let's get started on the lesson. For our supplies we're going to need a yarn needle with a large eye a crochet hook, I am using a 8mm crochet hook but you're going to need a crochet hook that is a lot bigger than what's recommended for your yarn the yarn we're using is recommending a 5.5 so we are quite a few sizes bigger if you've got a 7mm, an 8 or a 9 or a 10 that's going to work just fine or anywhere in between a pair of scissors the yarn we're going to be using today is from redheart.com we are using the super saver and also the super saver with stripes you can also get this yarn on redheart.com and I will leave a link below in the description box so you can go and get your own this one is the light grey this is a 10 ply yarn and this project can also be made using DK yarn or a number 3 this one is a number 4 recommends a 5.5 if you're using a DK weight yarn or a number 3 I would recommend about a 6mm crochet hook this yarn is 7 ounces or 198 grams 364 yards or 333 meters you're going to need one of these you probably won't use all of it I am making the small cow if you'd like to make a double length cow and I will put the size that you need to make on the screen I think you would only need one of these but if you do have a second one then that would be very handy but you definitely don't need more than one if you're making the small version like me this is the Red Heart Super Saver Stripes it is a 5 ounce ball so it's smaller than the other one this is only 141 grams of 5 ounces and it's 236 yards or 215 meters you will need one of these for the small version and if you're going to do the larger size you're going to need two of these it all depends on how wide you want to make yours and how tall you want to make yours I'm just making mine a single wrap and then I'm going to be making it about 12 to 15 inches high so that will give you an idea but if you've got two of these then that will be great too you won't you'll have some extra if you need it at all and I am using the Parrot Stripe colorway. This is a beginner project. It uses simple stitches like the chain and the single crochet. You could make this with a half double crochet if you like. And I guess you could do it with double crochet if you wanted. But I've chosen single crochet because it's a smaller stitch, tighter woven and perfect for winter. The reason I have chose a larger crochet hook is so that it's not really stiff when you wear it and it has a bit of drape to it. The Super Saver Stripe yarn is a really cool yarn. It changes colour reasonably slowly, like it, it doesn't have very short colour changes. And this is going to look great paired up with any neutral colour. I chose grey because that's what I've got a lot of. But this will easily work with a cream. It would look amazing with a black. I really wanted to make it with black, but black does not show up on my video tutorial, so I couldn't choose black. But I think that would look awesome. Or you could use a colour that would go with your yarn. So if you don't want it to be so contrast, then you could use a colour that goes with your yarn. But any of these long colour changing yarns are going to look fantastic with this project. Just as long as one of your colours is solid, this would also look really great if you had a solid colour by itself. So for instance, the grey. And then you had a variegated yarn so one where the color changes are quite quick because you're separating each row with a solid color that's going to look really pretty as well so this is the one that I'm currently working on you can see how it's changing quite slow in the colors there and this is my starting row and you can see that it's got big loops there I'm not really a fan of that so I'm going to add a single crochet round when I've completed my project I'm going to neaten that off I did go through one loop when I went into the chain that's just how I work but looking at this project now I don't like how that looks 
could thread a chain through there and make it a drawstring that would look really cute and that would actually work with that because that would be your eyelets for your drawstring but if you work into the back bump of the chain and you could definitely use a foundation single crochet which I will put the link for you just up here that's going to pop up and you can go and learn how to do a single crochet foundation if you don't know how to do that then that's videos there for you that would look amazing with this too and that will not give you those loops so I I would have used the foundation single crochet but a lot of people don't know how to do that so I thought that it might confuse you so I'm gonna stick with the chain but just let you know that if you go do it how I'm doing it this is got you're gonna get those loops but we can neaten it off with a single crochet edging so it's not too much of a problem So we're going to grab our yarn and we're going to make a slip knot. So I am going to be doing the chain version but if you want to do the foundation single crochet then go ahead and do that and I'll meet you when we are ready. So you're going to make a chain and because everyone's got different tension you may have different thickness of yarn uh, or a different size crochet hook. We're going to go by measurements only not by the amount of chains that we're going to make it doesn't matter how many chains you have it doesn't matter if it's odd or even this project is going to work so that's what makes it a good beginners project so the chain I made for my one I just showed you I made it so my chain was 24 inches long so I just kept chaining until I had 24 inches I didn't count them. I would, couldn't have a, wouldn't have a clue how many chains there were. So we're just going to make our chains. So keep going until you have 24 inches, and I'm going to put another measurement across the screen, and that'll be the measurement if you want to make it a double loop. So if you want to wrap it around once, no twice. Yeah, you know what I mean, like a double, a doubled up scarf or a cow. Yeah. So I'm going to put that measurement across the screen and that's how long you're going to make it if you choose to make the bigger version. So pause the video and when we come back we'll be ready to do the next part. So my chain is not 24 inches long as you can see because that's a very short 24 inches. But I'm going to make a small sample. Just grabbing my tape measure. I'm going to make a small sample. It helps me make video tutorials a lot faster. And it fits in the video screen a lot bigger so you're going to get a lot bigger that didn't make any sense a lot easier you're going to get your tape measure and you're going to find 24 inches so for mine says 24 but at two foot so that's 23 and that's the 24 where the two foot is and you're going to grab your chain and just pull it out this is not my normal tape measure <laughs> yep and this why don't use it because it just retracts on itself I don't know where the other one's gone seriously have a problem with tape measures and sewing needles in this house they just seem to disappear anyway you're gonna grab your chain and you're gonna lay it down you're just gonna lay it down like that you're not gonna stretch it out too much I'd probably stretch it out just a little bit but I wouldn't stretch it like that so just put it a, pull a little bit just so it's um, just so it lays in a straight line really you don't want to pull it so tight that it's nice and straight but just a little bit so that it lays straight until you get to the 24 inch mark or the measurement that was on the screen before and make a mental note do not use this tape measure again in videos I usually own about five tape measures I have too many works in progress because they're all in one of the bags that they're in. I'm sure of it. So once you get to the measurement that you need, you're going to pick up your chain and you're going to make sure that you don't twist your chain. So you're going to lay your chain flat or you can just run your fingers along and make sure it doesn't twist and then you're going to join your yarn. Again, I have a video on this, how to do this without twisting your yarn, and I'll put the link, it'll just pop up in the right hand side of the screen, and I'll put the link there for you. So 
we're just going to grab that yarn and pull through. So if you've done the foundation single crochet, you don't need to do any of this because you've already got all your single crochets ready. So just sit back and enjoy and we'll show you how to do the next part. So now we're going to do a single crochet into the same chain that we just joined into. So in here, now pull our crochet hook and work a single crochet. And that loop there, just make sure that was a little bit loose, John, that really tight. So I'm going to make a single crochet. And into the next chain, we're going to make a single crochet. So this is how I do mine. I'd go into that top loop there. And I just have one loop on my on my work. Which doesn't make any sense because it should have had two loops. I don't know what I did on the other project. <laughs> I really don't. It was late at night when I made it, so who knows what I did. Okay now, let's see that is what I did, because see how it's leaving these single loops like that. So if you want to work into the back bump, I know some people do that. I don't really know how to do that properly, so I'm not going to do it on camera. But they work into the back bumps. Pretty sure Beth in Texas 1 has those videos. And we're going to work our way around working a single crochet in each stitch. So work your way all the way around and I'll meet you when we are back at the beginning. So pause the video and I'll see you there. I've changed the backdrop so this should stand out much easier. So we're back to the beginning and we've done our last stitch and normally we would join if we were working in rounds that were joined we would join into the first single crochet but what we are going to do is do a single crochet into the first single crochet. So we're not joining. Now what we're going to do is just pull that out and we're going to fold it in half and we're going to have the stitch that we just did at the halfway mark. And we're going to fold that in half. You can count the stitches if you want to but you know if you fold it in half it's pretty good stitch that is on this end we're going to get that stitch and we're going to get our contrasting yarn which for me is the red heart super saver stripes and I'm going to place the crochet hook into the stitch and add my yarn I'm just laying it on top and then pulling it through and we want to work a single crochet into that same stitch so I'm just going to do a chain go into the same stitch and work a single crochet and I'm going to single crochet all the way around until I meet the other single crochet that we did in the main color which is our gray or the color that you started with is your main color and your contrast color is the one that you're working with now so we're going to work all the way around so for me it's not very fast so I'm just going to leave the camera going And what I like to do is just stop two or so stitches before. You're going to pull out that, to just pull out a loop, drop your contrast colour, which is the purple, which is stuck to my hand, <laughs> and you're going to put the grey one back on. Now this won't be, on the next couple of rounds, it won't be as quick because we'll get a whole round worked. So we're picking this back up and we're just continuing on continuing on and working single crochet all the way around. And we'll keep going and eventually on this round we are going to get to the contrast colour. But this only happens on our first round when we catch up to the other colour. So here what we're going to do is single crochet into the top of that first single crochet 
of the contrast color. So going in there with our crochet hook. Make sure this stitch is quite firm, this grey one we're doing. It's just because we're going up a bit there. Make that stitch a little bit firm. And now we're going to work our way around until we get to the next colour, which will be the loop that we pulled out. And again, because this is only small, it's not taking me very long. And I like to stop about two stitches from the end, pull out a loop. And now we just continue on with this contrast colour. And again, until we get to the next loop. So basically until you've run out of the colour below. So this one's going to take a little bit longer because on the first time you change colours you're just doing half a row, half a round sorry, but then when you continue on with the next lot of row, rounds you're doing the whole round. I stopped about two because you've got all this mess here and you just don't want to be crocheting over that. So dropping that on, picking up your new one. Now if you're not crocheting along with this, it looks like I'm changing colours all the time. Because this is so small, that's why. Once your cowl is a lot larger, it doesn't feel like you're changing colour all the time. We just continue around. And you notice that we haven't joined any rounds. Which is great. There's no ends to sew in apart from the beginning and the ends. So that should be, I think, four ends to sew in. Because we'll have two at the start, which was our grey, and the start of our contrast colour. And you can see here it's starting to stripe. And we just continue on for as long as we want. This could be any length. You could make it, you know, five inches tall, ten inches, twelve inches, as wide as you want to make your piece. So continue on. In the next part of the video I will be swapping to my already crocheted piece that I showed you away at the beginning and I'm just going to be adding the edging on that one because I want to finish that one off. So pause the video and I'll see you when we're ready to finish this off. When we finish it off we are going to be adding uh, one maybe two rounds of the contrast colour to the top and then if you've got these loops like me, we're going to be single crocheting around that bottom as well. So you are going to need enough yarn to do that. So I've finished my spiral part of the cowl and I'm just going to add the edging. That looks really cool. I love how the colours change. And what I've done is where I've started down the bottom here with my contrast colour with the purple yarn or the Super Saver Stripes. I've worked around until it lines up with that one where I'm currently working. We'll just bring that back down and this is where we're going to finish off with our contrast color and what we're going to do is just work a slip stitch into the next stitch and we're going to cut off our yarn I'm just going to pull that through then we're going to find the main colour for me is the grey and we're going to put that back on our crochet hook and now we're just going to work our way around so I think I need to do almost a new round and I'm going to meet you when we get back to where we just finished off the other colour so I'm coming up to where I did my slip stitch and I'm going to just make sure that's tight and I'm going to work into my slip stitch and then keep crocheting just like normal. So go into the next stitch, which is there, and crochet all the way around. So I'm working my way around with the grey, and you can see I've got two rows of grey there. One, two, and you can see on this side I've got two rows of grey. And I just want to finish this off. On our last round, we are actually going to work around and join it, just so it just evens it all out. 
So we want to work single crochet in there. And we can see how, how our yellow just stops there. And we want to make sure each stitch has two, two rows. So that's got grey, and there's one there. Then our next stitch is a slip stitch. Let me just see if that makes sense. So when you're looking at it, you want it to make sure you've got two rows, one, two, all the way around. So that slip stitch is not really there, so I think that looks good. Because this is a cow, it's all going to be scratched up, you're not really going to see it, so it doesn't matter if it's a little slightly bit off there. And that's what you get with the spiral. You don't get all the ends to sew in, but you do get this sort of immediate stop when it finishes. So now we're going to chain one and we're going to work a single crochet in the same stitch. If you want, I've just got this stitch marker that was reminding me to do something. Put a stitch marker in there and that'll let you know where you finished. You should be able to see it when you come back around but that's really going to let you know. And then we are going to single crochet in every single stitch around and we're going to join when we get to the end of this round. So pause the video and I will see you there. So I'm coming out round to my mark stitch, just want to take that out. And strand out the way. I'm going to join into the stitch, which is the very first single crochet of the round. Ooh, I'm going to join that. I'm going to cut our yarn. And we're going to pull through, and we just need to sew in that end. And that just neatens off the edge there, so it looks really good. We also want to neaten off this bottom edge. You don't need to do this if you've got the single crochet foundation because it would have looked really neat already. I'm just wondering if I should turn that into... You could add an I-cord. Um, I'll put a video in to show you how to do the I-cord. The link will be just up here. Um, and you could thread that through there if you liked, but I'm going to show you how to neaten it off. So join your yarn anywhere. I'm just going to pick somewhere away from that strand. And you can either go through there, that's going to give you a large hole, or go through the two vertical bars there with your crochet hook. Join your yarn. If you've made any of my cardigan patterns, you'll probably know this method. Join your yarn in. And work a single crochet back in that same stitch. Find the next one, go between the two vertical bars here, it's in there. It seems to be hard with a bigger crochet hook. And we're going to do this all the way around. And that's making the edge look really neat instead of these loose bits. So put your stitch marker back in there, which is the very first stitch that we did, and work your way around. When we get to the end, we're going to join to the very first single crochet, which I've marked with my stitch, stitch marker. I'm going to go into the top of the stitch and then do a single, do a slip stitch to join. I'm going to cut our yarn. I've just noticed these scissors have gone rusty. It must have got wet somehow. And then just pull that through and then we just need to sew in that end. Thank you so much for choosing my tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Please share your curations on Instagram and on our Facebook page. All those links are in the description box of this video. If you haven't already, please subscribe. If you click on the 
logo that has popped up on the screen. That will help you to subscribe. Also check out the other videos that have popped up on the screen. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crochet.